uh, name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come among us, Holy Spirit, and speak to our heart what is happening around us in this hour. Lord, we want to know because you are your children, and if your children do not know, who else will know, Lord? Speak to mm -hmm. us, Lord, loudly and clearly, softly, and in our deepest part of our hearts, speak to us loudly if we don't understand, Lord. We pray that in the name of Jesus. Um, among, around, um, so we're here into that place where uh, that's the second coming, that's not the rapture. So that's not what we are waiting for. There is another event which is called the rapture. If you're not aware, we'll speak about it anyway. Uh, um, but Sonia, my sister, she sent me a, a music about, uh, you know, um, the East people or the Orthodox people celebrate uh, the, the Palm Sunday, where the other ones or the West people already celebrate the Christmas on this Sunday. So um, she sent to me that video. It's a beautiful song. Um, about the entry of Jesus in J Jerusalem, the Palm Sunday. Uh, and the song touched my heart so much. So uh, I, I sent it to a friend of mine. Um, you know, like I said, you know, I, I know that's uh, maybe not, but it reminds me of the coming of Jesus. I see it that way. That's why it excites me so much. Palm Sunday is just like, okay. But when you, uh, when I saw it on that day, the revelation came to me that the Lord Jesus is coming and he's coming again. Then the revelation uh, jumped in my heart. So she sent me back, you know, another, uh, oh, that we already in the Easter. That was on Sunday. So she was upset that I celebrate with her uh, or I uh, wished her happy Palm Sunday. It was not Palm Sunday. I was just showing that we don't see that Palm Sunday as the coming of our King and his entry his victorious entry to Jerusalem. When I see it that, that way, my heart was really um, rejoicing in an incredible way. When I had another friend, you know, I want to send her again, you know, uh, happy resurrection. I said, oh, the, our resurrection is next week. So I upset my, my two friends, the one who is not uh, celebrating the, the Palm Sunday and the one which is celebrating uh, the, the East, the two of them was upset because I was not in time, but I was trying to share the truth, which is in here. And uh, we're going to speak about uh, that in a moment. Uh, here we can see that uh, Palm Sunday is coming from the book of Leviticus and the book of Revelation. And we have it now. I do not know if Pentecostal people are celebrating it or not, but if you don't, just start to celebrate it in a way that you can understand that's a very prophetic day. And I've never appreciated before uh, when I heard that song from my sister come to me in a different way. So in Leviticus is say, you shall, you shall take on your first day to both good trees, branches of palm trees, and both a thick, uh, thick tree and willow of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord seven days. Seven days, rejoice before the Lord. So they don't celebrate one day or two, they're seven days. But then you go back into the, this is a picture of the Jewish people into their culture today. But this one is uh, the book of Revelation when people um, beheld and look great multitude, no man could number and all the nation, kindred, people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb and the cloth with white robe and palm in their hand. So that's, uh, Palm Sunday will be celebrated in very, very royal way. So it's not finished. And it's not going to be like Jesus coming on a donkey. He came one time on a donkey, like you can see here. Or here, one of those pictures. He was coming on a donkey. But the second time, Jesus will not come on the earth on a donkey. But he's going to come in a glorious coming. And that's, you know, the, the revelation who come to me when I was meditating and, and listening to that um, old uh, tune, beautiful tune. Uh, I don't have time to let you hear it, but it's a beautiful old song that, that uh, Jerusalem rejoice, your, your king is coming. Your king is coming. So unless our eyes is on the king all the time, our life is not like, uh, you know, uh, you're loose, you're not attached to anything. And, and the church is more not attached, more and more. We're really like disconnecting from everything from each other and from the church. And 
uh, were not connected and that's something not very um, uh, joyful to do. Um, I just have to, um, I find some people now having um, Those are news guys, Christian around the world, they're trying instead of uh, wishing for everyone happy Easter, or uh, I don't call it Easter anyway, they call resurrection, happy resurrection feast as we call it in the Middle East. Um, they are trying to erase the feasts for others. And it's not enough what's happening around the world from uh, the secular world who's trying to ruin everything we have our heritage and everything. Uh, so those are pictures of the news. Uh, if you are from you know, news, uh, Australia here, uh, where is it? Uh, they give you the news about this. Uh, why would you know about this is in the news, about the apocalypse uh, and about Jesus and um, every miracle Jesus performed and the truth about Jesus. This is in the news, the secret sect rejected by early uh, Christianity. A couple of years ago, the Lord showed me this, uh, for the one world religion to happen, uh, it's not gonna happen ever without having Jesus in the middle. They have to take him out of the equation. And that's exactly what is happening in our days in front of our eyes and we do not know. I was uh, on uh, last day before the, the time off that we had for this uh, was Thursday night and they put a big egg now in the middle of the shopping center where I work and they put in it so you can sit on it like a Santa and whatever and they're preparing for the invasion of next year or whatever the bunny will come and take children on his lap and, and I was very furious. What is it, you know, they stole the, the the resurrection, they stole the crucifixion, they stole the, the uh, entry of the Lord as a king. They took all that treasure from us and putting us an egg and a bunny. But I'm not gonna go for that war because I found like the one who's doing that war are stupid Christians. You know, they already stole from us a lot of things and we're not aware. Uh, uh, two years ago, I sent, you know, um, happy Christmas to a Christian uh, bishop. And, and he's an uh, apostolic. He is not, uh, he's like a Protestant or charismatic. And, and he was very, very upset about people celebrating Christmas and Easter and whatever. And I didn't know what is the problem, you know, on that time, but not knowing, you know, that uh, then I said to him, I have two Christmas, I celebrate uh, with um, the two times. And if I wish I celebrate Christ every day, I didn't know that the church or the Christian are warring on themselves. Why? Why are you robbing yourself from a feast and celebration that is unique for you as, uh, you know, and they wanna make it all the uh, happy holiday. And now they remove the word, uh, they call it Monday, Easter Monday on the advertisement. It's called Easter Monday. So the church people, with their stupidity or naivety or those who wanted to protest about everything, they wanna take this celebration out of the, the calendar of the church because they're ignorant and they think they are preaching good preaching. But I'm telling you, you read the news every day. You know, I have it in the corner here. Uh, maybe what, that's why it's not coming. Uh, it, it show me the news by itself. In the corner, I touch this and the news come. And every day there is news about Jesus, uh, and, and if you really have time, read the, that one about the truth about Jesus. And they are taking every lie and every stupidity from yeah. all religion, and they start to put it on the Lord Jesus, nothing of it even as a truth. What the Muslims say about it, what the Gnostics say about it, whatever. And so the word is hitting into that direction of taking Jesus out of the equation. And who is helping them more now is the Christian. Even, you know, those two um, celebrations, you do not know that the Lord is commanding us to have those feasts. Uh, we don't do the feast of uh, the Jewish because we are just, you know, uh, cut from them and separated from them. But even the one that we are celebrated as Christian, let them cut them. And there is, you know, uh, many people who are warring on this. But let me show you a little bit of um, the rejoicing that the treasure that I was speaking about earlier, 
when the Lord is really want us to rejoice uh, about that entry of the King of King, you know, that feast of the um, Sunday, Palm Sunday, which looked to you like really an event, you know, not that important. We have more important event are the, the resurrection and, and of course the cross and the resurrection of Christ. And even, you know, the Thursday night, which is important because we have the communion and the death and, and the betrayal of Jesus These are more important. But when God revealed to me that event of the Palm Sunday, I said, I'm gonna preach about it. I don't think people preach about that topic by much. Then and the Lord here, I'm gonna show you from the prophecy how beautiful, and I want you to treasure those words as we read them. In Zechariah 9, 9, he's saying, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold your kingdom come, your king comes unto you. And he is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon, this is the original uh, prophecy, he is riding on an ass and upon a colt, the fall of an ass. So that's the original prophecy of Zechariah. But there is another uh, prophecy of the Zechariah, uh, which um, is yet to come. Zechariah, when he is, uh, Jesus is put his um, feet on the mountain of Jerusalem, of uh, uh, Olive, and the mountain will split, and this is the second coming. So I want you to know that the Lord was preparing us for all this. And if you're not really celebrating the first coming of Christ, would you celebrate the second coming? You probably, your heart do not know how to rejoice. You know, the, the, the uh, Jehovah Witness, they don't celebrate any uh, birthday or any whatever. And what the Lord commend us, and I'm gonna show you if we have time, uh, how into the, the, the word of God in the Old Testament, he want us to rejoice. Men appear in front of me three times with their offering and whatever. And they read a new rejoice. When I was growing young, I was a serious person, very busy all the time. Never appreciate to sit there and, and have a feast and, and eat the biscuits when made on. That's not for me, those things. are more important things to do in life. But I didn't know that I robbed myself of those pleasures that the Lord is commanding us to rest and to enjoy. And you're gonna see that how is repeating if we still have time. But uh, rejoice with me on those coming uh, of the, the coming of the Messiah. Your Messiah is coming. The Christ, the Lord is coming and see it as a second coming. Take those words and feel them in your heart and treasure them. In Zechariah 2, he says, sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For lo, I come and I will dwell in the midst of thee, said the Lord. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. That shall my people shall be my people and I will dwell in the midst of thee. You shall know that the Lord of hosts shall send me out to you. So the Lord is celebrating that he will come and sit in among uh, uh, Jerusalem in, Z in Zion and all nations will come and join us. Is this prophecy fulfilled? No. This is a prophecy about his coming for the second coming. So I want you to feel it. I want you to treasure those prophecies. Crowd, cry out and shout, O inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One in Israel among thee. We have to see the coming of the Holy, another one. Break forth into joy, sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people and he redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all nations. Means like, you know, when you take your sleeves off, up, for all nation and the end of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. So if you are not a person who is really waiting and expecting the coming of the Lord in a, in a real way, then be one of them because there is a crown for that. Out of the five, five crown, there is one for the one waiting for his second coming. But I'm just really, uh, I was um, collecting, you know, those Bible verse and treasure them in a way. The Lord is talking to Zion, talking to Jerusalem, talking to the city of the great king, and he is telling her that he will come to gather all the nation. And he's putting you into this, that feeling, and you just have like a rehearsal. I've seen that coming of the, of the Palm Sunday is like the rehearsal of the Lord coming in a human way. And when they said to him, oh, don't you see what your disciples are doing? Just tell them to shut up. And the Lord's not, if they shut up, the, the, the stones will shout loud. 
So see here, there is nothing going to stop the glory of the king when he's coming. In Isaiah, he said, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all the waste places and he will make her wilderness. This is something that I never understood, that the Lord will create everything green. There'll be no um, desert in, in uh, the land of God. We're from Egypt. Many parts are desert. Uh, one lady was visiting from Europe years ago, and she was just like amazed by the Sahara, which is a desert. Why are you amazed of the Sahara? It's nothing. Of the nothingness, you're coming from a place where all green. But the Lord is going to turn every place which is not green into green. He, the, the, uh, and, and he make the wilderness like Eden, and he and her desert like a garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. This is what will happen uh, uh, for the coming and the restoration and, and, more, of, and more of this uh, Bible verses. Uh, and this one is, is, oh, that's one of the cryer uh, of his second coming. And he say, and his feet shall stand upon the mountain of Olive. That's what we are waiting. No, no, not for us now. This is the second coming. We are expecting as the children of God, the, the rapture. Uh, his face and stand upon the mountain of olive, which before Jerusalem in the east and the mountain of olive. And that will be, you know, the mountain will be really divided into two. And the Lord, that's the last part of it. And Judah and the Lord, my God, shall come and all the saints will see. So all the children of God who were seven years in heaven celebrating, that will come with the Lord. So this is the second coming of Christ. Now, um, I change, you know, a little bit of, uh, the things, the, because we're trying to unveil or unreveal a little bit of the prophecy or the things which is around us those days. Um, this is a saying that if you do not see a way, does not mean that God does not have a way. And this is not a comforting word here. I'm using it that God has a plan different from what you think. God has another plan. You don't put God into the box. Is doing things very, very different from what you think. I was just meditating on this, you know, uh, what the relation, because our focus here is on the coming of the Christ very soon um, and, and how all the pieces, you know, when you play shaker, all the, the, the pieces are one by one or put into a place when that event will come. So is there a relationship between the rapture and between communion? And the Lord showed me that secret here. Um, the Egyptian um, were really torturing the, the Israelite and the Lord commanded that they will have to leave into that night uh, and before leaving. So before leaving is exactly like us now. We are before leaving and going to the heavenly place with God. It's before the rapture, before they are leaving Egypt and going to their promised land, something would, should happen. They had to have an exercise of the blood of the lamb, which is the communion in our uh, uh, time. So the night before the mirac miraculous exit from Egypt, the Israelites, they observed the Passover and for us, the communion. So I just want you to focus on this because this is one of the very good weapons that people do not uh, really and as I was sharing with Pastor Alfie the other day, how the communion every time is created problems with the believers. Everyone wants the communion to be done on his way. If you look at the churches around the world, there is no church doing the communion the same way like others. No one is doing it on the way of the Lord, not even one church, not even one doing it on the way that the Lord did it on the Last Supper, ever. And uh, I study that and I study a lot of the things of the Jewish uh, culture and whatever. None of us are doing the right thing. And everyone, we gather together. Our ministry is from different uh, group of, you know, from uh, Orthodox, Catholic, from Protestant, from um, charismatic people, from Pentecostal. So everyone wants things to be done into her own way. And every time we do communion, we have to offend someone every time and i was just thinking you know what is the problem you know so one of the weapons that the lord want us to use before the exit because the rapture is our exit 
is to practice the blood of Jesus into that simple format. Whoever eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up in the last day. This is very powerful because this is Jesus into a real way. Problem of the charismatic Pentecostal and uh, Protestant brother and sister, they do not take this as real bread, uh, uh, body, real broken body of Christ and real blood of Jesus. And, and this is something they really have to consider themselves um, differently because if you never eat the flesh and drink the blood, you never have eternal life, as simple as that. So they have to alter their mind and understanding the way exactly as the Lord said it. You never had a picture, you know, to take you eternal life. No, you need whoever eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed. So one of the strongest weapon, I was raised in an Orthodox church. So only the Abuna, the priest who is allowed to give us that sacrament. And, and I don't, you know, from a few years now, an oldish uh, uh, friend of mine, she's from the Pentecostal church or the charismatic uh, church. And she shared that secret with me that she take the communion every day. Are we allowed to do this? And I was shocked. Am I allowed to take communion every day? Who gonna change to the blood of Jesus and the, the body of Christ, you know? And I was a shock, but you do not know how your health will change and how it gonna change your makeup, your health, if you have health problem, whatever, and change everything in you. If you really start to practice and you see the relation, the blood before the exit, the blood of Jesus was on the post and on the side of the world before the exit. So today, as you and I are expecting the exit and the, 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 the coming of Christ on the air to blow the, the trump and take the one who are ready, you don't want to wait for this. Because if you're waiting for this, you probably will never do it to the rapture. And as you're a Christian, you're not, you're not in a good position. You are for the one to be raptured with the last trump. So uh, having this, you know, is very, very important tool. And, um, and I'm just gonna give you the second secret uh, here. And then we talk about, um, the Lord said, um, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. The Lord wants to sanctify you. you know, sanctify mean, means he make you saints. You may think so, or all of us think so. But sanctifies me like those are the vessels that I'm gonna use for my glory. Set them apart, one big, one small, one slim, as you can see them, best sanctification. Set you apart. And yes, how can he sanctify us? The Lord is telling us that we might be sanctified and cleansed with the washing of the water by the word, that we might present it to himself a glorious church, have no spot or wrinkle or any uh, such thing, but that is about to uh, be holy and without blemish. So the Lord is preparing the bride. And as he preparing the bride, he wash her. He cleans her. He make her sanctified for him. But how can he do that? He do that through the washing of the water. So here is two things that you do in your lifetime before the rapture. And, and, and this is really two secrets. If you really try, start to practice them, you find your life in a in very short time moved and changed. The washing by the, the words. The word of God is the washing. He wash you, wash you with his blood and then he wash you with the word. Wash you with the blood of Jesus and the word of God. That's really um, a tip that you really, if you try to do it for yourself, you'll be very prepared. Here is the saying, um, no, not this one. Uh, so this is here the communion. Like I said, you know, the Holy Spirit will come. As you say, whoever eat my flesh, and, and, and think this is the word uttered by the Lord Jesus on that day is still working. It's not the priest or anyone uh, is changing anything. The word was uttered. The Holy Spirit will come upon this element and turn them to. So if you take a medicine, let's say diabetic or blood pressure tablet, whatever, and you, you really serious have to take them in time. How about you practice, you know, start practicing, have this medicine that life of God into you in a simple format and a real format. 
You know, no one understood the power of the eternal life like uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, Apostle John. He's the most speaking about eternal life, eternal life, eternal life. None of others understood it like him apart from the Pharaohs. So here is the, 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 the power of God will come on that element and turn him to eternal life into your body. Um, um, just, um, I wanted to do communion. So the Lord is giving you that secret. Do it, use it. He is on that time of the life, human life, he is swifting the house of Israel. Amos said that, Amos 9, 9, he's swifting. It means like um, taking what is good and what is bad is coming out. And with this shaking, you know, it, it, the, the, the grain is uh, detached and it's very painful. Church are on those days, you know, um, the Lord will want to come and find you faithful. Are you faithful? So he wanted to cleanse you by the word of God day and day to make you ready. And the father is looking at the groom before he sent the son. So when he is looking at the groom, why is he looking? A lot of idolatry, like our pastor was uh, sharing with us now. A lot of tattoos. The bride is stained. Uh, he betrothes a spotless bride to his son. Israel and Judah refused to repent, and so the church. We think we are better than Israel and, and Judah, but we really are uh, going on the same direction, you know? So we have the groom father wanted to see in the bride. He wants to see in you the blood of Jesus. He wants to see in you the word of Jesus. He wants to see in you the spirit of Jesus. And uh, then he will send the son. He wants to see you, that you understand those things. He's checking on us on this time of our human life. He's shaking people. Some hard situation coming on your life because he wants the good part of you or the good part of his children go on one side and the fake ones go to the another side. Here is one of the uh, good people, which in the Old Testament, uh, his name is Elijah. And he said to the Lord uh, that no one is, you look around you and you feel like, oh, there is no one faithful anymore. Will God will come for that people? Who, where are the faithful? Betrayal, division, backsliding among the church. Backsliding, it means someone who was really a believer. Backsliding is not a sinner. So you have really to... Uh, care for yourself, you won't be one of them. Because backsliding, you were, you tasted the Lord and you've been in a good place with him and now you slide back. And this is time for all those things to happen. Here, Elijah, he said to the Lord, there's only me left. When you look around you and you feel like, oh, I, I was shocked into that person. This one happened and this one and then, and say, it's only me left the Lord. But the Lord, he said that I left 7,000 in Israel. Their knees will not bow to the barn. And every mouse which has not kissed him. So those are the real uh, people. Uh, they're called the remnant, of course, that the Lord will keep in them, the, the ones who are really faithful. It, it is hard today to find a faithful church, whole church. You find in one big church, few are faithful. That's how much we are really in a time which is not really... Um, you have really to go and, and practice the things which God is telling you here. He wanted to see his, the, the blood of his son. He want to see the word of his son in you. He want to see the spirit of your son formed in you before, you know, all that things which are on you, not praising and not pleasing the Lord. But we are sometimes hiding in a cave like, like uh, Elijah was doing. He was hiding in a cave. Um, and, and, and these people... Um, other people are loving the Lord, they're praising him, they're worshiping him, they are on their knees, but not maybe a whole church. That's the thing, we are not into the good big church now are affected, but they have to do whatever is to, they tell them to do. So for you to be one of those faithful, those sanctify and, and set apart, 
it pro probably on this time of the human life will be individual. Um, most of the time having that syndrome of Elijah feeling they're lonely and that no one is around them, they've been betrayed and they don't know what to do. So if you are one of them, don't worry. That's a sign, um, you know, that the Lord is coming soon and he will pick us all, the one who is faithful. Main thing is he has to find you faithful. He has to find you faithful to be uh, qualified to be with him. Um, uh, now talking back about that event of the feast and whatever, uh, the church is not celebrating the seven feast of Israel. They okay, say, so why should we uh, celebrate? I give a lot of teaching about that before. So just here touch uh, on this, you know, the, the biblical holidays or the, the feast of Israel that are um, eternal. And God said, you do them and your children and your children for generation. So how dare the church to stop that from us? But they did. Even last year, we we're trying to find those feasts and how to celebrate them. And we were not really knowing because we don't have any um, Jewish friend who can help us. But I'm gonna show you this three feast of the, the, because here is that war happening. We have to stop the Easter and the Christmas coming from the Christian church. They're not enough what is happening around the world from destroying the character, the personality and the, 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 the deity of Christ. He's a good man, he's whatever, he's a, a, a good thinker, he's, uh, and they spoke about him every, anything you can find that in the news. But none of them say that he is the savior of the world or the king of the world or the Messiah or God the son or any of the things which Jesus is. But if here, um, I make you know part of this to make it uh, clear for people. On the lower part is the seven feast of the Jewish, um, uh, they call the seven biblical feast of the Lord. So our feast of the Lord. The Lord want us to feast. He want us to celebrate. So if anyone want to stop you from doing Christmas and Easter, say, please, you stop, but I will continue to rejoice with my Lord. If I don't rejoice for his resurrection, so what I'm rejoicing for his incarnation, God become a man to redeem us. How can this not be celebrated, guys? So all those crazy Christians who want to, like yesterday, my husband was preaching and uh, he said something which put me in, in tears. I couldn't stop myself crying. Uh, he was talking about the cross. And, and, and he said that the cross was the element of the torturing of the Christ. I've never heard that word. I've never heard, I've never seen that the cross was a, a tool or the way to, to uh, um, terrorize Christ, to torture him. It was a torture tool. So what you're wearing here is not only carry a cross. And they say this is, that cross and the people having the cross and all that are idol worship. There is big difference between an idol worship and carrying the cross. And, and uh, after he said that yesterday, I was just like crying. I couldn't stop. we well, thinking that this is a symbol of torturing my Lord, that cross. And the Protestant or the people who like to protest uh, don't want us to carry the cross. When Jesus said, if you don't carry the cross and follow me, and our Christ is not, they took it out of our churches, they took it out of our uh, uh, schools, they taken it out of the hospitals, and, they, and we follow them with their brain new idea. So we're not really attached to what is in the, into the, the, the origin of the church or the background, the sacrament, the good things which our primary church has, and we go with every crazy movement, and we are dividing and separating ourselves from what is true and what is not. When I said this story a few times, you know, I had a cross without a crucifix on it because I, oh, Christ is not on the cross. And I said, oh, yeah. Well, later on, I, I get to, to the verse when, when Apostle Paul said, I don't want to know among you except one thing, Christ and him crucified. Really? Is this all what you wanted to know among us if we have a conversation on the phone with Apostle Paul now? That's all he wanted to talk to me or know me for the cross and the crucified. 
So we have been robbed day after day from things and we are not aware as Christian. And the robber is there. The robber is from outside the church, the secular world. So for them to have uh, a one world religion, Christ has to come out of the, the middle, take him out of the middle, take the cross out of the middle, take the crucifix out of the, take these things. Take, take, take that things called Jesus, God, and all those rubbishness. And they're introducing us all sect who have been on the time of the, this is in the news of every day. The sect who has been into early Christianity, which were denied. And they keep introducing us the UFO and the, the, those dinosaurs and, and how is that into the Christianity and a and, and lot of rubbishness and people read it. You read it once, you, you start to believe it. But now the Christian are trying to put you know, you, their finger in their eyes. Is enough for the attack of the church from the secular world. Why do you wanna take the power out of you? Do you know that this was a torturing tool of Jesus? And if you see him that way, I watched a movie a long time ago that guy was um, tortured in a very cruel way. I think it was in Japan or I, I don't remember, it was a long time. But then he wanted one thing to go and revenge for this guy who did that to him. And one day he was able to go back and then he was saying the tools of torturing that uh, he was putting it on them. So that turned to a place of visit. People go and visit the torturing place when there was these torturing things were happening. It turned to be like a, you know, a, like a visiting place. And he was pretending that he's a visitor and the guy who was torturing him didn't recognize him. And then everyone left and he was sit alone with this guy who torturing him that much. This week on Saturday, we had a guy who's been an Iraqi Christian. He was tortured for nine years into the prison of uh, Iran. Nine years, nine years. So think about Jesus seeing that cross. This is the tool of the cross, the torturing element that Jesus had. And this make me really, I never knew that cross that precious. And they want me to take it away. You know what? I'm born in a Muslim world. When I put the cross, you know, and I put it outside in the eye of the Muslim, I am a Christian and I will never deny my faith. And I don't care about your spread or your power. You have to be strong. There is strength in you and the ch church of the Christian who are really wanted to have a new idea or whatever, new theology, they don't read the Bible enough to get the good food of the word and they just create anything, rubbishness and it spreads. So you don't run after the darkness, you just be light. Don't worry about the darkness. Darkness is gonna get darker and darker in time to come. But if you are light, you come in there in the middle of all dark, very dark room and the light of God shine from you. Think about this. How are you going to fight the darkness by you having the light of Jesus in you? So if you focus on that topic, part of the seven biblical feasts that the Lord are commanding us, three of them never happened before. Four of them happened. But here is this one here. This is the rapture. This is the rapture. The feast of the trumpet is the rapture. So this feast should we celebrate? Because every time the Jews blow the trump, there could be a good chance that this is the day when the Lord will come and pick his children on the, on the cloud. This is the feast of the trumpet. But then there is a second coming. Like we said, he will come on the mountain of olive the same way that he left. But he's not gonna come on a donkey. That glorious coming will be the second coming for the Lord and every eye will see him and he will, land on our earth, on our planet earth, and we will be behind him on our horses coming from the glory, from the heavenly realm to the earthly realm back again. That's called the second coming. And that's into the feasts. This is the day of the atonement. What is the day of atonement if you do not know? Uh, we were invited in Jerusalem and on that day they didn't tell us because we do not know anything about the feast of Jewish and whatever. And uh, they didn't give us food for the whole day. And we were really fainting, you know, we didn't know. They cut, we were staying into the placement and 
they cut everything about us and, and the day of mourning and a day of fasting and, and a big sorrow day. All the Jews on that day, they mourn for their uh, sins. The same thing happening into the traditional church. I don't think into the modern church, which saying that the charismatic Pentecostal Protestant, they don't celebrate that. But the church around the world, especially the people of the East, the Orthodox and the Catholic, the Day of Atonement is uh, similar to the day of the Good Friday. People fast all day. They, they even wear black. They, they read every prophetic word about the coming of the Christ from the, and, and there is song that they sing it 12 times to be, be glory, the honor and the power 12 times every hour, every hour for 10 hours, every uh, day of the, uh, that week of the Passion Week. But here, that day of atonement, if really they do it in, in a proper way, then the Jews and the Christians should be really weeping for their sins. Because if they don't, that day of atonement is the second coming of Christ where everyone will be caught in whatever he did. And the one that Jesus is coming, uh, already come from heaven, there will be some who are gonna join us. It's a day of weeping that they really close themselves and ask for the Lord. For the Jewish, if God will accept, you know, the, the, the sacrifice, recover for the sin of the whole nation for a year. That was before, of course, the, the, the destruction of the temple. But until the day they mourn and they do really heavy mourning, asking God to take their sins away. Same thing the Christian are doing. Last feast, which is the millennium, we call it the, uh, the feast of the tabernacle where all the Christian around, I mean, the, the people around, they lived into the desert. So that's the feast of tabernacle where God will join with man as the book of Revelation chapter 20. This is the dwelling of God with man. And this feast of tabernacle will be still celebrating in the millennium. In Zechariah, I say, if you don't come and uh, uh, the water will not be given. This is a millennium prophecy. So people as a Christian, they're so ignorant. They do not know that we've been robbed along the years from our previous whatever division, cut, 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 cut. We do not know about all those treasures. Now they are coming to cut from us, you know, the Easter and the, uh, I, I don't call it Easter. I'm sorry, I don't use that word. Into our culture, we call it the resurrection day. So on that resurrection feast, they want us not because it's a pagan feast. I'm gonna tell you exactly what. Uh, so I just want you to know about those feasts, but um, let me show you this and I don't wanna make it so big for you guys. Um, Christian around the world should think that way. Sorry. Yeah, this one here. So um, for the Feast of the uh, Resurrection that we're talking about, this was into the Bible, it's very clear, there was the Pascha, the Passover. So this is the Passover of the Jews, and this is all their celebration coming on that day. What happened on that day, and, and the Orthodox people follow that time. The, the Catholic, we already celebrate, but the Orthodox will, will uh, uh, have that feast coming next Sunday as the Jews will do it. What happened on that day? This is the earth, and this is the sun. It's called equinox. That's a word that's uh, the North Pole, and the earth will be balanced in a way it will be totally parallel. And this comes two times in a year. So on that time of the year, two moments in the year, the sun is exactly above the equator and the day and night are exactly equal. And this is where the Jews uh, take that day to be the feast of the, the, the Passover. Not any other day is done by decision from God Almighty, where he really the sun, as you can see the picture is settling there and the night and the day is exactly equal. So this day is organized by the Lord. You like it or not. And it's very clear into the word of God that that should be uh, the, the, the feast uh, as Jesus was given as the lamb instead of the lamb that they should offer instead of the Passover. So why Christian have two feasts? What is this shameful thing?
So this is here and other things, you know, I don't want to lose your time, but this is really when the moon is full and the Jews are very meticulous people, they calculate it very well. All you need to do is to follow them. It's no hard. Now we come to the, 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 the Easter, that's the, the, the resurrection, the feast of the resurrection of Christ. That's how about his birth, right? You don't want to celebrate his birthday? Are you more important than him who do your birthday? And Jesus' birthday, the incarnation of God the Son. You don't want to celebrate? Don't. But don't really come and, and put rubbish things, you know? They make people stumble in their faith. And when you find a, 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 a priest come, a pastor come and tell you this, don't celebrate and don't, don't wish me a Merry Christmas. I don't want to wish you Merry Christmas. I wish myself. I want to have everyday Christmas. Every day Jesus born in my life. Every day is celebration because I have Christ. You want it to be said, go and be said for yourself. Be sour. But here is, if you like it or not, either you're Muslim, you're Christian, you're Hindu, you're Buddhist, whatever religion, you have the Gregory calendar. In the Gregory calendar, everyone approved before Christ and after Christ. Either you believe in him or not. So why not the 1st of January is the feast of the Christmas? All what they happen, the Catholic will take one week, you know, after, and the Orthodox will take one here before, and all of us will have that day that the whole world agree about, 1st of January. Simple thing. And you say, why should we celebrate, you know, like really? Uh, and, and, and I just don't want to give you all those difficult things, but here is the church have seven, um, seven messianic feasts. So those one that I, I, I told you about, they are the Jewish feast. But what is the church doing? Is the church having feast? Some uh, uh, might say, oh, the, the, they didn't write in the Bible that we have to feast on those days. But the church wants you to celebrate those events. So that every year they have this. So there'll be the seven, there is great messianic feast and there is minor messianic feast into the church. This is in the Orthodox and in the Catholic church, some similarity of this. But the Protestant and the Charismatic and all those people, they don't want to have that. You don't want to celebrate the, the, the Feast of the Lord, which are eternal. It's, it, it's an everlasting covenant because you do not know about them. You cannot come three times in a year for seven days, no work and sit there to celebrate like the Jewish are doing. No one can. So what is it? You want to be sad and have depression all the day? Be depressed. That's your portion but don't preach it to others. So here is uh, the seven um, great feast of the, the Orthodox, I took it from them. It's an annunciation. When Mary was announced by the angel that she will have uh, the, her child, when Jesus is born, which is the incarnation of God the Son. And then after that, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, the baptism of the Lord Jesus is celebrated as one of the main feasts and then come after that, the, um, uh, the starting of, uh, and the, the resurrection, the ascension of the Lord and the Pentecost. And you found like really uh, many of them are similar because the first fruit is the resurrection. Pentecost is the same. Like similarity into those uh, feasts that God is giving. So no one can say they are not biblical. In the past, they're symbolic. The four feasts that I didn't speak about them, they are coming into that place. Similarity. I don't want to make it too hard or too long for you. But then you can find uh, other feasts like uh, the circumcision of Christ, his entry to Jerusalem, uh, Christ, and when he entered in the land of Egypt, when he did the, the wedding of Canaan, uh, Camel Galil, when he was in the mountain of Transfiguration, uh, and the Thursday, which is the Palm Sunday, all those are minor feasts of the Lord. So saying all those things, the church are robbing us from the past. They did that, that they cut us from our original uh, link <coughs> with our Jewish uh, origin. And they're cutting us, and they want to cut us even from what is happening into the church around. Everyone wants to be separated and have his own opinion. The divide, 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 and no one is uh, staying connected. So for you guys, uh, I just want you to know there is no other foundation than Christ and Christ alone and uh, celebrating him every day. That's an honor. 
Um, and I want to give this for the people who have problem to celebrate is uh, resurrection. That's the way we talked about it last time or a few times before. The wisdom of the cross, the wisdom of God. The secret, the mystery of Christ, the mystery of which isn't from all ages. God put it in Jesus, and then we find out it's in the cross. That's what we're celebrating either last Sunday or for the people who will celebrate next week, it will be next Sunday. They are celebrating the wisdom of God, the hidden wisdom of God. The hidden wisdom of God is the cross. They want to take it from you. They're going to take, you know, the crucifix that already did death and they shoot away. Please go put a cross on your door. Put it so people when they, uh, they know that's not a Hindus, you know, that's not a, 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 a Muslim house. This is not a homosexual house. This is the house of the Lord. Put a cross on the door like they were putting into the, the Israel. They put the blood of Jesus showing we are covered by the blood of Jesus and we belong to him. And um, if you do not know that Jesus is the only foundation for the people who never knew the Lord, is the only foundation that you can build. Either your religion or your background doesn't matter. There is no other foundation you can carry all your sins. You're a sinner. You sin even if you're sitting in one room with yourself. You have issues. You have issues. You have burdens. No one can carry this, only God the Son who carry this in his body so you and I can have eternal life. So this is here the, the, the issue of, or, or the, the things, you know, the heavenly father and the Holy Spirit through Christ and Christ alone, he reconciled with the earthly human being. So how about you, my friend, which religion are you? Which feast you want to drop and more tools taken out of the church instead of having celebration? I just have hundreds of verses that you can celebrate three times, come and, and rejoice and eat and be happy. Go in the Old Testament and see how God wants you to be happy. But you won't be happy without forgiveness of your sins. Your issues are so ugly and you know it. Would you come to Jesus today and throw all those things on him? Every sickness, every disease, every mental idea, every, everything, come and say, Lord, just please take this. Take that burden from me. Let me be free today, Lord. Let me be free. I just want to put all this rubbish, all that garbage with my, all those secrets that I have them when I was young and no one knew about them except you. You saw me. Take them away. That sin of your childhood, that sin of whatever. All, all you see this and in, in, in the lust that you're having in your heart and jealousy and all those things that only God knew about it. Wouldn't you like wanted to get rid of them because they're poison? They poison in, this, in, in your system. They poison in your spirit. Today, my friends, come to the Lord. Take that rubbish, that bag of rubbish that is in your heart all those years and in your life and in your soul, which is like really hindering you from going further through it on this cross on Jesus, because he's the only one who can carry that burden, who can carry this sin. And the power of his resurrection will set you free. So Father, I just pray that everyone will receive you today. They come to the cross of Jesus. Either they celebrate the Easter yes, last Sunday or they will still celebrate it. They will come and bow before your cross, before you, worship you, love you. Confess that they cannot carry that burden anymore. My brother, my sister, throw that burden on the Lord Jesus, on the cross, and be free. And be free. Be free today in the name of Jesus. If you confess your sins, he is, he is faithful and he will forgive you for all your sins and set you free. I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.